So in this problem, we're trying to find VO in the following network. And in this case, VO is the voltage drop across a 6 kilo ohm resistor as seen in the diagram. And so in order to find this VO quantity, we want to use one of the basic uh, circuit analysis techniques, whether that's a mesh analysis or a nodal analysis. And so in this case, since we're trying to find voltage drop across a resistor, which is essentially a SOT voltage, we can consider using uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And so Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, is basically tied down to mesh analysis or loop analysis. And so since KVL is in terms of voltage, we can easily uh, just use this technique to find VO. And so loop analysis pretty much requires us to draw uh, loop currents in each of the loops of the circuit. And so each loop is basically defined by each enclosed area or square in the circuit. And so for example here, we can go ahead and draw a clockwise loop current. And I can just call that I1. And I drew this current clockwise so that it can be in the same direction as the given uh, current source. So right here you can see that the 4 milliamp current source is pointing to the right. And so a clockwise uh, I1 value will also point to the right in that spot. And hence we won't have to deal with any negative numbers. And now for the second loop we also draw another clockwise current. And I'll call that I2. And then here we can also see that the current I2 is also in accordance with the circuit elements since the voltage across a resistor is going to tend to have a voltage drop or potential drop. And so here the current, as you can see, flows from positive to negative, which signals a voltage drop. So pretty much keep in mind that current should flow uh, from positive to negative. So as you can see here, the positives on the left side, the negatives on the right side, and the current is going from left to right, which satisfies this condition. And this is also the case for that five volt uh, voltage source. And so the KVL principle pretty much requires that the algebraic sum of voltages in a loop should be equal to zero. And now another principle which we'll need to use is Ohm's law, which basically states that uh, voltage is equal to current times resistance. And so knowing this, we can already derive an expression for VO. And so since VO is the voltage drop across the 6 kilo ohm resistor, uh, we can write VO is equal to the current I2 times the 6 kilo ohms. And so that right there will be our first equation. And so now that we have that voltage VO figured out, we can move on to our actual KVL equations. And so starting off with I1 on the left, the first thing we need to note here is that I1 is flowing through a current source. And so whenever we have a current source and using loop analysis, we're going to have what's called a current constraint. So pretty much that's saying that the current I1 flowing through that source has to be whatever it needs to be to satisfy that current source value, which in this case is 4 milliamps. And so we're going to have a current constraint equation, which is simply going to be I1 strictly equals the 4 milliamps. And again, this is because the current needs to be 4 milliamps in order to satisfy that current source. And so that right there is simply equation two. And now we can actually start performing KVL on I2. And so I will just write down I2 here. And now we are looking at the loop on the right. And so first of all here, we see that the current is passing through the four kilo ohm resistor. But we also see that I1 is also passing through that resistor, but in the opposite direction, as you can see here, indicated by the arrows. And so what that means is basically I1 will be negative in this case, while I2 will be our positive current. And so writing out the KVL equation using the Ohm's law principle, we have I2 then minus the I1 since it's going in the opposite direction of I2. And then again, 
voltage is equal to current times resistance. So we need to multiply this current difference times the resistance of the resistor, which is four kilo ohms. So that's the expression for this first element. And now moving along the loop, we reach uh, VO for the six kilo ohm resistor. And so we already have an expression for VO, which is our equation one. And that's just I2 times the resistance six kilo ohms. And so we simply add that to our previous expression. And then finally, we have the voltage source, which is just simply five volts because it's directly given by the source. And so I will just simply add five volts. And again, remember that KVL is the summation of the voltages equal to zero. So all of this will equal zero volts. And now multiplying out the four kilo ohms to I2 and I1, we will get negative four kilo ohms times I1 plus four kilo ohms times I2 and then plus six kilo ohms times I2 and then equals negative five, moving the positive five to the other side of the equation. And here we can add the two like terms with I2 and also substitute the value of I1, which is four milliamps. And so this will end up being negative four kilo ohms times four milliamps. Then adding the four with the six, we get plus 10 kilo ohms times I2 equals negative five volts. And so multiplying this out, we get negative 16 volts. And then plus the 10 kilo ohms times I2 equals negative five. And so here we can now simply solve for I2. We add the 16 to the other side. And that leaves us with 10 kilo ohms times I2 equals positive 11. Then divide the 10 kilo ohms. And so here we have 11 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms. And so volts divided by resistance equals current. And so that'll leave us with units of current, which is what we expect for I2. And that is 1.1 milliamps. So I2 is equal to 1.1 milliamps. And now that we know what I2 is, we can finally simply solve for V naught, which is I2 times six kilo ohms. So hence substituting the value of I2, which in this case is equation three into equation one, we get V naught equals 1.1 milliamps times six kilo ohms. Once again, current times resistance, we get units of volts, which ends up being 6.6 .6 volts. And so VO equals 6.6 .6 volts. And I'd like to point out that if you find yourself struggling with circuits by any means, I suggest you review the steps closely and just practice over and over again to sort of build your intuition of seeing the relation between Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's laws and pretty much get comfortable with solving circuits like these and also keeping in mind of the constraints that may be involved in these circuits. And so I hope you found this video helpful and if you did be sure to leave a like and subscribe.